In the previous video, we started talking about how Morse code can be thought of as doing a sort of lossless compression. And we started introducing some terminology and basic notation here. And in this video, we're going to formally define symbol codes and we'll look at some examples. So maybe before we jump into that, I should mention, if you don't know what I mean by random variables and IID and all this stuff, then you might want to brush up on your, or you should brush up on some probability. And I have a series of videos called the Probability Primer Series, which you can check out if you are unfamiliar with that stuff. Okay, so now we are ready for the definition. A symbol code, symbol code, also called a variable length code, maybe more often called a variable length code, is just a function, which we'll denote by C, from X, so X is going to be our source alphabet, to A star, where A is, is going to be our code alphabet, and A star is this set of all finite length sequences of, of letters or elements of our code alphabet. So it's the set of all, all strings from our code alphabet. So that's it. So it's just a function. It, it, takes a, it takes a source symbol and it gives you a sequence. So like it takes J and it gives you this sequence of say zeros and ones, or you could think of a dots and dashes. Now, before we started talking about random variables and sources and stuff like that. But for the moment, for, the little, for a little while, let's forget all about probabilities and stuff. And let's just play around with this, this definition. So there's no probabilities in here. And we can just play around with this and, and see what we can discover about symbol codes. So first we have another definition, the extension of C the extension of C is the function C star from X star to A star. So I'm using our star here not only for A, but also for X. So this would be all finite length sequences of, of elements of X. And this C star, this is just a notation. I'm just de defining this function, C star. And it's the function, that function, such that for any n greater than 0 and any x1 up to xn in x, we have that c star evaluated on that sequence, on that string, is equal to cx1 up to cxn. So you just evaluate C on each of the elements individually, each of the symbols individually, and you string them together, and that's what C star of that string is. So in other words, the, so, so this is referred to as when we just st string them together here instead of putting com commas. Sometimes we, people call that concatenation. And so in other words, another way to say this would be that, that C star, that, that the image of the concatenation is the concatenation of the images. Or a mathematician might say, you extend C homomorphically to these sequences. So that's the extension of C. And what this allows us to do is to take, for example, take a sequence of, of letters and get a sequence of code words, right? So if we had like, you know, cat, cat, well, you can't read that, cat, that would be a sequence of letters, and you would take the sequence of code words and string them together. And that's what they do in Morse code. And we have one more piece of terminology here, which is, so we have a terminology, the code words of C. I've been sort of throwing that term around without formally defining it. But the code words of C are just all the sequences in the image of C. So this would be like all the sequences are the sequences A1 up to AK in A star such that C of say X equals A1 up to AK for some 
x in script x. Try to make that distinct. Now, we've tossed out a whole bunch of definitions and, and terminology and notation here. So maybe the thing to do now is to look at a few examples to make all of this a little more concrete. Let's do some examples. Examples. So our first example, the simplest one, would just be our, our Morse code there. Morse code. Or the first one we talked about at least. So in Morse code, what would be what would each of these things be here? So if we were going to take Vale's approach, our source would just be, we would just have a discrete memory list source in which this alphabet X the source alphabet is all the letters and, and numerals here. And we were gonna and we would model the English language as, as being IID sequences of letters or numerals. And our code alphabet would be, for example, zeros and ones, and, and each of these would be like so A would be like the code word one zero one one one. 0, 0, 0. We have to include the zeros at the end to have spacing so you know when the letter ends. So that would be like the code word for A if you were to think about it in binary. You could also think about it as dots and dashes and so forth, but I think this is a nicer way to think about it. So that would be our, our, uh, our source and our, our alphabet. So maybe I should write that here. Let's see. So just to be concrete. So X is the letters A, B, C up to Z, and the numerals 0 to 9. A would be 0 and 1, the way I've described it. You could also take it to be, say, you could put like, if you wanted to think about dots and dashes, that would be a different way of thinking about this code. And then maybe you need to have something like pause. So this would be to, to indicate the, the pauses between letters and words. That would be another way to think about it. And C, what is C? Well, C, you know, our, our, our symbol code for Morse code, it's this map from X to the sequences of zeros and ones. And that's just exactly what you see in the table here. So this is defining C. This is defining our code. For each letter or numeral, we have a sequence of zeros and ones. Okay, so that's a simple example, or at least a, a very intuitive example. And let's actually make some even more simple examples. So we're just going to have some sort of toy examples to, to play around with here. So let's just take an even simpler case where our source alphabet is just these four letters, A, B, C, and D. And let's say that our code alphabet is yet again 0 and 1. You know, and it's not always going to be 0 and 1, but that's sort of the easiest thing to think about. And let's say that we have a random variable x, say that this our source is a sequence of random variables, each of which has the following distribution. x is a with probability 1 half, b with probability 1 quarter, c with probability 1 eighth, and D with probability 1 eighth. So if you're not familiar with this little notation of defining a random variable, all I mean here is that is that the probability, so this first part means that the probability that x equals little a is equal to 1 half. That's what I mean. And likewise for each of the others. So etc. And our source would be the sequence of random variables x1, x2, x3, etc. Each of which, so they're IID, so each of them is in, they are all mutually independent, and each of them has this distribution. So that would be our source. And now let's look at three, so I have made up three little examples of codes that we're going to play around with using the same, all of these will have the same source alphabet and code alphabet and, and source. So the first one we'll call A. So A, C of A, so what we have to do for C, you know, to define C, what is C? C is just a, it's a function from X to A star. So we need to take each of these symbols, A, B, C, and D, and define some sequence of zeros and ones. So C of A, let's just call that zero. 
That's a sequence of zeros and ones. Let's call C B, C of B, one zero. Let's call C of C, sorry, that's two different C's. Let's little c. C of little c is, let's say, one one zero. And C of D, let's call that one one one. One one. So that's a nice little code. Put that in a box. That's our first little code, code A. And just to give you an example of the extension, so C star, what is C star? C star is, is this thing, it's this function from sequences of source symbols to sequences of code symbols. And it has this property, you know, it's the, it's the, you just concatenate the code words of the individual source source symbols. So for example, if we took, let's see, make, maybe just make up a sequence here. So let's say C star of, I don't know, um, A, A, C, B. So what's that? Well, it's C of A, C of A, C of, whoops, C of C, C of B. C of A is what? C of A is zero. C of A is zero. C of C is one one zero and c of c of b did i do that right yes yeah. one one zero c of b is one zero and this little sequence is in a star it's a sequence of elements from our code alphabet it's a string and of course you know i didn't mention it but a a c b is in x star a sequence of elements from our source alphabet, or this is our source alphabet here. So that's a nice simple example. Let's do another one. Let's do another one. Let's do code, another code, code B. So let's make up something different. Let's see, maybe, so I actually, I'm not going to just make this up on the fly. I've, I've chosen these examples ahead of time for to suit particular purposes. So we'll say C of A is 101, C of B is 00, zero C of little c is 0, zero, zero 1, and C of D is 1. That will be code B. And let's make up one more, or I'm going to give you one more. So let's, let's say C of A is zero, C of B is one, C of little c is zero one, and C of little d is one zero. That's a code, you know, it's, a, it's just a map. All a code has to be in order to be, a, to be a symbol code, it just has to be a function from these symbol from these uh, these source uh, these uh, source alphabet these source symbols to sequences of zeros and ones. So that certainly satisfies the definition. It is such a function. Now it is it is a valid code. It, it satisfies the definition. It is such a function. But there is something that ought to disturb you about this last example, about example C, because, for example, C star A B is 0, 1, right? Just string those together. But also C of little C star of little C, well, that's just C of little C, and that's also 0, 1. So if we just saw the sequence 0, 1, we would not be able to figure out what the original message was, what the original sequence of source symbols was. So we would say in this case that this code is not uniquely decodable and that is a bad thing. So next we're gonna start talking about uniquely decodable codes and lo start looking at their properties. Okay, see ya.